watching continuing coverage of Helene from West 2. This is a very big storm. You're going to have impacts that are far outside of what a spaghetti model would have or what a cone would have. You're going to have impacts of this storm inland in the state of Florida, really all across the Florida Peninsula. Down at noon, Hurricane Helene is on its way here, and most of the state of Florida is on storm watch mode, and people at the storm's direct path are saying they're not taking any chances. We have live team coverage spread out across the state from Volusia County to the Big Bend area, where this is expected to make landfall. And thank you for joining us for this special edition of West 2 News. I'm Meredith McDonough. And I'm Sheldon Dutess alongside First Morning Meteorologist Eric Burris and First Morning Meteorologist Kelly in class. And uh, yeah, a lot's been changing in the last hour. Yeah, guys, let's just kick it off things uh, Things here. We know this is fast moving, now a hurricane. Uh, what are your thoughts on it? You know, I think that it's getting better organized. At the moment, it's kind of slowed that intensification down just because of its proximity to land. Yeah, and then it goes into the Gulf of Mexico where sea surface temperatures right around 87 to 88 degrees. That's just going to allow this to rapidly intensify today, tomorrow, before making mm. landfall. And it's expected to become a strong Category 3 right at landfall tomorrow night in the Big Bend of Florida. But let's take a look and see the latest advisory from the National Hurricane Center. Carries winds of 80 miles <laughs> an hour. That's a Category 1 hurricane. You see the reds, purple, oh, almost shit. those whitish shades <laughs> uh, near Cancun. That's the center of circulation. Looks like it's bringing in just a subtle amount of drier air. But once it gets away from land and it's able to kind of set up the atmosphere again, it will have no problem getting more intense. And that's why... That water's fucking 88 degrees, but... ...brings this to a Category 2 <laughs> storm ah. later today, Category 3 storm tomorrow morning, and making landfall as a strong Category 3. This is the most uh, intense that it's been in terms of landfall points. 125 mile per hour winds. That's just shy of Category 4 intensity. The forecast cone has not shifted. It has gotten smaller. So your eyes are going to see right about there. Minute. We're just very much Kiss kind of just ass. playing this out, okay? But based on its size, all of Central Florida in blue under tropical storm warnings, meaning tropical storm conditions are expected for us. Hurricane warning posted for I'm West Marion County Again. because there's that expectation of at least tr uh, strong tropical storm mm. force to hurricane force wind gusts. Now, this red line, that's the 11 o'clock forecast from the National Hurricane Center. That's the center of the cone. This orange line was the 5 a.m. forecast. So we have not shifted it at all. And if anything, the last few runs have shifted a little further to the west, which would be better for Central Florida. Computer forecast models very tightly in agreement, so we're very much on track. But again, very large storm system. For now, just watching some of these scattered showers, but these downpours working with the beach line, this is the first batch of blinding rains showing 30-ish mile per hour winds <laughs> and another band coming in here around Melbourne with about the same 30 to 35 mile per hour here winds. Here we go, here but we go, here we go. it's been saying all go. morning long, even <laughs> though the core of the storm moves into the panhandle of Big Bend, this is a very large storm system. To talk about Melbourne. how that compares to Melbourne. previous Melbourne. systems, Melbourne. here's Melbourne. me here, I'll just count it in class. A1A, so a baby. Ron Jones. <clears throat> months ago and then Hurricane Dahlia, which also made landfall in the Big Bend area. So Debbie had a wind field of about 170 miles. Hurricane Dahlia had winds of about 220 miles. But the wind field right now with Helene, Hurricane Helene, I should say, is now 330 <laughs> miles. So this is a very large system that is going to bring a lot Last of night they were saying 60 miles. The center of circulation is I knew they were wrong. From Central Florida. So the worst of the weather this is, is what we do, folks. I-75 this is, this, this is That's going job. to tomorrow evening where we could see winds of around 35 to 45 miles per hour, but gusts around 65 to 75 miles per hour. Isolated, seven inches of precipitation or even higher. Yeah. And of course, yeah, we're watching yeah, the severe yeah, weather yeah. threat. And that's actually going to be for every single Central mm. Florida location. For our metro spots, still the worst of the weather on Thursday evening with max wind gusts of around 45 to 55 miles per hour. And for our coastline, I-95, the same timing for the worst of the weather, Thursday evening, but wind gusts of around 35 to 45 miles per hour. So the farther east you are, and especially southeast in Brevard County, the lesser your impacts are, but we're still looking at gusty winds and some squally weather. And we're gonna be watching that severe weather potential over the next couple of days. Coming up in a few minutes, we'll talk a little bit more about that severe weather potential. We'll also have a look at your certified most accurate Sunday forecast.
Mm. I'm gonna rock it to I'm gonna rock it. Uh, I yes, rock. power outages is a major rock, concern, rock. and getting everyone back on their feet uh. is a top priority. Many people will lose power depending on where you are. Many people will lose power. No fucking shit. Understand that that's you're a genius. That can happen, and Asshole. Place, so you're able to, to weather that Shut up. Power out is that's what we do. Boy, and the governor went on to say that the Florida Department of Transportation what is on asshole. standby to make way on the roads for electric crews. Go away. Resources like the state and National Guard have also been deployed. The governor is saying that we are also are ready to address God bless the these guys. They work so hard. The governor also said that uh, they've expanded the state of emergency to now cover 61 of our state's 67 counties. So all but six counties are part of it. Yeah, mandatory evacuations are also in place along the Gulf Coast and in the Big Bend region. As of right now, everything from Gulf to Charlotte counties, they have been put under evacuation orders. Emergency management teams say that there could be a 15 foot storm surge in some areas, and they want everyone to go to Tampa and get a fucking body for the storm. Well, she's Christina Watkins, joins us now from the Big Bend this morning. Christina, people all over are preparing for a catastrophic flooding and damage in that area. Cedar Key. They really are, Marichelle. And I gotta say, I've covered my fair share of storms from living in New Orleans to just growing up here in Florida and experiencing it myself. And I gotta say, it's really reassuring to see so many people getting ahead of the ball and preparing ahead of this storm. So much That's like it. Franklin County, where we were earlier today, here in Wakanda County, a week ago, this Marina, you can see there's not a single boat left in sight. People are putting their finishing touches on their preparations ahead of whatever this storm could bring to the Big Bend region. And they are preparing for that threat of dangerous storm surge and flooding on our way over here from Franklin County to Wakulla County. It's about a 30 minute drive. We saw the choppy waters of the Gulf. Yeah. We also saw a lot of people making their final preps, boarding up the windows of their homes. Some people even packing up from their vacation. We met one family visiting from the Big Bend region of Ohio. They told me they were supposed to stay in town until this Saturday. But of course, their plans changed when they immediately go to when they saw the track from Helene. Now they're heading to Nashville, to Nashville, Tennessee, before they end up going back home. So it's really good they have a plan in place. And whatever the plan for anyone here in the Big Bend region, emergency leaders say today is the final day to execute it and find that safe space. Back out here live in Wakulla mm. County, giving you a look safe at some space. of the conditions right now. It is eerie. It is quiet. We are right next to a yeah, restaurant does get creepy, that is buddy. putting their finishing touches on their preps as well. Everyone is getting out of the way because they don't yeah. want to be Sorry here when this storm makes okay. landfall. There are no shelters open in Wakulla County. The sheriff says people can go next to the county next over in Leon County, which is where Tallahassee is. But now the sheriff is just recommending people leave the Big Bend region all together. Reporting from Wakulla County, Christina Watkins, West 2 News. All right, uh, interesting to point out in Christina's live shots earlier this morning, that water looked like a mirror. Yeah. And now you can huh. kind of see the ripples of like the smaller waves there. All right, people in a few Orange County neighborhoods have had uh, a tough time with flooding recently. Yeah, they've been concerned about what could happen when Helena rolls through. Now, we've shown you these images of the flooding in Orlando and also the nearby St. John's River in Lake County. Now, this That's is just only about 30 minutes away from here. So I can get a St. John's River really half now. Especially if you live on the coast. Communities that are More vulnerable like Ormond Beach down to New Smyrna Beach in Orange County. And also locations in Brevard County like Merritt Island, Cocoa Beach, and Port Orange. All considered Woo. Zone A. Fortunately, our East Coast will not be getting the brunt of this storm, but people in Lake County, where Bob Hazen joins us now, will need to prepare for what's to come. And Bob Lake County is planning to go to their highest alert level. It's still rainy. <laughs> That's right, they have already gone to level one activation, mm -hmm. and unluckily for me, it started raining here in the last <laughs> 10 minutes or so. so we're this poor fucking guy. Ain't that a bitch? <laughs> These sand piles. It's been pretty busy <coughs> this morning as people are coming out here to get ready for the storm. And this is I just got here. I say day. you should be doing today is getting your stuff together Poor now to be ready man. for tomorrow. Lake County has <laughs> ten sandbag locations open, including this one here at Frank Brown Park in Mount Dora. They'll be open today until seven p.m. or until the weather gets too nasty to stay open. Emergency officials tell me they are expecting heavy rain. Some isolated spots could get six inches and some very strong winds. And we talked to some folks out here at the sand pile today who say that that wind is what they're really worried about because it could take down power lines.
We're more likely to lose power, and since we're on a well, then we'll lose our water. So uh, I'll have some water in the house ready for that. That's standard procedure. And they are also watching out for flooding here in Lake County, especially along the St. Johns River in Astor. They say though it has been going Good down over the Astor. last few days, so they don't think the river will hit major Damn. flood stage during this storm. Lake County has also not decided just yet about whether or not they want to open any of the emergency shelters for people during this storm. That decision will come probably later on today. They do have the benefit of the fact that the schools will be closed tomorrow no matter what, so those would be used as the shelter, so it makes the decision a little easier to make. Reporting live in Mount Dora, Bob Hayes and West 2 News. And as we take a look at Central Florida, it's Marin County in particular in our area in Central Florida that is the worst of this storm. Good. Michelle Meredith is live in Marion County where the Emergency Operations Center uh, is set up now for whatever comes their way. And right now we are at a sandbag station in Ocala where there is a steady flow of people loading up those sandbags. And we talked to one fellow who said, this is nothing. He said he was at one station where there was an hour wait. Now, I want to show you the nifty little setup they have in Marion County. They think of everything. They took a traffic well, cone. Duh. They cut the bottom or off. Rednecks. They got it on a two by four. And check this out. Let me see if I can pull this off. Then you fill up your little shovel and you put it in. Ooh, I did it. And folks, there are 10 she gets of these stations here <laughs> in the Marion <Mary> <laughs> area. And they tell me they're going to close about 7 o'clock. So people of Marion County, come on down. Come and get it. Now's the time. Come on down.